Hello, Olivia, my lovely. I hope that you are well and I'm super happy that you are back on and congratulations for uh, being back almost at the weight that you left. So you bear, you come back on 68.1, which is just 400 grams, which we know that, that at the end of the week, if you are still focused, drinking your water, making sure you're having your greens and everything that I have said before, you will get rid of that as it's just like, 400 grams that you pick up on a few days is definitely just showing some water retention. I know you were also very active when you were um, away and so that is a positive thing. Now I wanted to make sure that we explain a few things about this goal that you have set yourself to which is to uh, we have four weeks until the wedding of your best friend and you want to Find yourself in a number of ways, which is 65, that you feel comfortable at. And that is totally, totally fair. Now, I don't, uh, you know that I don't really, I don't specifically like um, goals that are time restricted. Well, they should be time restricted. But when it comes to losing weight, unfortunately, things don't go as linear as we wanted. However, the reason why I like this approach is because when we did the exercise, to look into your diet, there were so many things that were um, wrong <laughs> with the diet. That, that's why by doing some small adjustments, which was all the things that I said, so eating more mindfully, making sure that you're listening to your body um, uh, fullness cues instead of just eating everything that is on the plate because of just for the sake of eating what is on the plate, um, not drinking calories. So make sure that you only drink um, uh, water or uh, calorie free drinks, or of course, in the case, um, alcohol, which is something that I want to touch a, a little bit. Um, that's one. Then adding uh, the greens and the veggies, and then making sure that we build our uh, meals around protein. So also make sure that we're hitting the protein. Um, and just if we stick to these parameters, we could definitely carry on on this amazing um, trend that you've been on. So when we started being more mindful, we were at 70.3 kilos, which means that one, two, three, that four weeks later, you were actually three kilos lighter than um, when we started, okay? So we have now got into a habit, because it's been four weeks that you've been practicing mindfully eating, that you've been practicing um, all the things that I said. And now we can continue with the same pace, because I believe that um, we still have where to go, way where to go with your body. So now what I wanted to... Um, make you aware of is that um, sometimes, but this doesn't, I think you are not that kind of person. If, if I know that you are the kind of person who likes to have a goal, for example, when you did the reverse barbie, someone who will get triggered by um, not being able to do the exercise will tell me, oh no, this is too hard, just change it because I cannot do it. But you, you, you have this mentality or this personality that the harder you find there, the more, the more motivating you find it as well. So this is the reason why I believe that for you, it will not be a mental fuck. Sorry, more my work, but for some people, this um, having a certain weight goal can be a mental fuck because then they start to be so stressed about the number of the scale that that same stress is the one that then leads them to mindfully or, or mindlessly eat or leads them to have more hunger just because they're just thinking all day long about I need to lose this weight, I need to lose this weight, which means that I need to be uh, on diet, which means that I need to be on diet, which leads them, leads them to actually feel more hungry, more anxious, and just make the whole process a lot harder. But because I know that you are not this person and that you are someone who really gets motivated and driven uh, in a positive way by data, because I've been with you long enough to know what type of person you are, like, literally just like me. So because of this, I believe that we can easily, and I'm not going to say easily as of like, it's going to be a walk in the park, but we can easily get there just applying the same principles that we know. So from now on, look, Olivia, from now we have two, four weeks. We have already started your body to get rolling with this process, which is the most important thing. So because you are um, 
starting from a point in which your metabolism was completely healthy, in a way that I say healthy because your diet was so fucked, your diet was so fucked up, I was going to say, or your diet was so, I'm not going to say fucked up, because it wasn't fucked up, it's just that you were literally just going by the feeling of what you wanted to eat, and you were not consciously making food choices based on health or anything, because of the period of life that you were going through. But since we started this uh, exercise, and after obviously looking at the things um, that I mentioned before, sorry, I just did this video uh, like, but I remember that I, I just then noticed that I wasn't recording myself, so I'm not sure if I already mentioned the things, but uh, uh, yes, I said about the wine, etc. Yes, I already mentioned, sorry. So because um, your diet was in such a bad point when we started, that's why we have been able to see changes just by doing a small fixes. And this is how it should keep going, because I don't want to, I don't want us to just, um, say that because of the next four weeks we're just gonna be on an extremely low deficit you're gonna be doing three times more exercise because you're gonna get to that point and you're not gonna be happy and you're gonna be depleted and then what is gonna happen is that at the end of those four weeks you're just gonna go back to your old habits instead what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use this opportunity to get the boat rolling even faster which means that you will double down on being mindful when you eat and what that means it will be then us being more being wiser with regards um, food choices in terms of when we are having a meal, we need to make sure that uh, we are building up that meal uh, from protein and green so we have lots of fiber and then the carbohydrate that we're going to be using, I will like it to be mainly from rice, that's a, a, oats, uh, vegetables, and uh, pasta, but lean pasta, but we can have a look into what you're eating again. So this is what I was going to suggest. I was, I was going to suggest for us to do again one more week um, of what you are currently eating. First, to remind you to bring awareness back into your food. I know you've been really aware, but I just want to see what is it, the, the difference between what I saw then. I told you that we were going to do this anyway a few times. I want to mainly see the difference of what I saw then. I want to see what you're doing now. So I can from now tell you, okay, so the next step will be maybe if we just uh, focus on food volume um, every time you eat, because there is something really important, like there is, there is a study that shows that the human body gets basically the perception that we have uh, in terms of the hunger levels depends on two things. Obviously, first, the fact that we are eating, so we feel full, but normally we, we feel full faster than what we can uh, perceive. So that's why it's important that we eat slow so we can actually listen to those uh, hunger uh, levels or the, those society cues um, on time. So when you eat really, really fast, you then feel really, really full and really unwell. That's because you bypass your society um, sickness and you end up overeating. But another thing is also the visual and the portion size. So for example, if you eat a very small cheesecake that will have a lot of calories, especially if it's um, with a lot of sugar and a who knows made from but let's say you eat a very small cheesecake that has a lot of calories and then it, on the other side you will have a salad with a olive oil as dessert uh, as a dressing sorry then you will have chicken and then you will have a piece of multi-seed grain bread which will go with it then in the other side we will have the same amount of calories but the good thing is that we will have all the macronutrients and we will have a lot of volume which will then mean that you will be fuller for longer why fuller for longer? Because there is volume, which means that our stomach is full. That's why I got you to um, drink a glass of water before and after every meal. I'm not sure if you are doing it. So if you are not doing it, let's practice it. Because what we're going to practice from now on is all in volume. And what I'm going to do as well is us implementing some fasting. I want to say fasting is not intermittent fasting, but instead trying to avoid snacking in between meals. So as I was explaining um, with the study, um, when you eat the small cheesecake, um, you eat the cheesecake, which has the same calories as the uh, salad and everything else, but then because the size is so small, 
both your stomach and your eyes will be looking to get more food just because you you know that that wasn't enough for your stomach and both like psychologically and physiologically your body will be looking for more food which will lead you to straight away eat something else which will add into more calories or will lead you to very soon wanting to eat something else and that will be playing with your sugar levels um around the day. Now, if we focus on making better choices, and this time it's gonna be more uh, volume foods, which I can explain you what volume foods are. Um, I will send you something at the end of this, but it's basically, for example, every time I eat, I make, that's the reason why we eat uh, the vegetables um, with the food, because we wanna make sure that we have the portion of protein, the small portion of carbs, and then we're gonna have plenty of vegetables, which are gonna give us lots of fiber, and then it's gonna give us a lot of space in, in the stomach that is going to keep us fuller for longer. And the fasting, with the fasting, because you are obviously with Phoebe, and Phoebe normally eats all day long or very, very often in the day, uh, every mother tends to kind of like snack on what the baby leaves. Uh, from the food and then you end up on this cycle in which there is in, in which there is constantly some food getting into you whether that is big or small there is something uh, I don't know too crisp that got into your mouth a, a piece of carrot that goes into your mouth because I'm not only talking about bad food I'm also talking about normal food a fruit that went into, into your mouth but what um what um, the ladies are, uh, or what I have been advised to do or to implement with some clients is to challenge them to actually just stick to those three meals a day for the majority of the weekdays. But it doesn't mean that you will be drastically cutting the amount of calories that you that you take because you will be make you will be making sure that those three meals that you're gonna have they're gonna be full meals which means that you're gonna have all the macronutrients the protein the carbs and the fiber yeah but what we're gonna do with avoiding and snacking and this is something that I actually don't do I don't snack much there are days that I feel more snacky than others mainly on the weekends when I'm free but when I'm working, I actually don't snack. I just have my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner, and that is it. The only snack that I have is my pre-bed snack, but for me, that is another meal because I don't eat enough during the day, so I need to use my, my night time to get most of my calories. Still, that is a meal because I still have the protein, I still have um, the fats and the carbs, okay? But what I wanted to say is if we leave at least four five hours in between meals, we will be doing two things. First, we will be aiming, um, or we will be, yes, we will be aiding, like helping the the blood glucose, so the insulin will be helping to regulate the insulin in our body, because every time we, we ingest some food, the insulin raises, it doesn't matter what you, you, you um, consume, the insulin will raise, yeah? When you consume protein or carbs, the insulin will raise. And then uh, normally we, the insulin will raise and as we digest the food and as, the, as we are using the energy from meal to meal, the insulin can should go down. So then again, you have the next meal and then it goes up and it wears off and it goes up and it wears off. But when you are cons consistently chewing into something, even if it's small as I just mentioned, that insulin is all the time up, 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 which then makes um, losing fat a lot harder because funny enough, believe it or not, is actually going to make you wanting to snack more often instead of making you feel fuller is actually going to increase your appetite like the, the fact of snacking all the time is going to increase your appetite and second um is is going to make it is going to make it harder for you to um as I was explaining, so in order for us, to, when we, there is a, when there is a weight that we want to lose, we want to we want to make sure that we are not having the insulin all the time up because as when the insulin is up, the options of oxidizing fat, which is burning fat for fuel, are lower. So we want to make sure that the insulin goes up after every meal. And as it wears off, you will be then oxidizing fat for fuel. But also that time in between the, the, the two meals is going to help your gut bacteria to actually reset. Because basically the gut bacteria, for the gut bacteria to break down food is a, is a lot of work. And if we are constantly giving and throwing 
food into the gut bacteria. That is where digestion problems also ari arise from. Um, so, but mainly from the glucose standpoint is that they can see the benefits if we stick to three meals a day. So what I was going to suggest is if we implement this, um, and yes, it is totally achievable. Yes, you can drink as much, not as much coffee, but you can drink up to two coffees a day because of health reasons. I don't want you to drink more than that. And then any time in between, you can always drink. And, and the coffees, ideally, we want to have just one with meal and then all of them black. And then the teas, um, if you want to have teas or if you want to have water, you can have as much water in between. But we don't want to have them with meal. The, the coffee uh, and the tea, we don't want to have it with milk or sugar because if you have the coffee with milk or sugar, you will be increasing um, the glucose, which is what I explained. So we wouldn't be really fasting in between those two meals, okay? Oh my God, I just did such a weird face. So the most important thing is either we um, we do the fasting in between meals and that would be that you will, whatever Phoebe is not going to eat, you're going to put it back into a pot and you're going to keep it for later and whatever um, that she's not going to eat and it might go off, it might go off, then you're going to put it into a pot, put it into a freeze and make it part of your meal. But let's stop picking up uh, whatever Phoebe is not eating because this is not going to be helping you for this particular goal that you have. And if we do those things, we can go back, in, we can still go carry on with this pace of losing weight. And, and the last thing that I wanted to say, for these four weeks, I really want you to make an effort to limit the alcohol for the weekends. And I would like you to, um, as alcohol choices, I would like you to go for a... Um, gin and tonic or tequila or something that is, is drink in the in spritz rather than red wine where red wine let's try to go for a glass if you really really love it but just i just want to have like a lower calorie uh, alcohol options um so at least um the extra calories that we are that your body is used to take from alcohol at least we can use that these four weeks to use that deficit from the alcohol as well that we are uh, consuming. Now, this is a very long message, but what I would like you to do, I will um, tell you later. I'm going to stop it here and uh, let me know if you want us. It will be nice if we could do the, um, the, the, the food diary again so I can see actually what changes you have made and maybe I can remind you, Olivia, let's just add a glass of water here and here and there. Uh, maybe let's replace this for this other option that uh, it gives you better macros or something like that because I know you're not tracking calories yet and I don't want you to track calories yet. I want us to, to keep I'm not. I'm sure that we are in a very safe position to keep losing weight without having to count calories. So those is my that is my thought process. Uh, sorry for a the long video, and I might share this with the team as well because I love a lot of people with uh, benefit from from this. Have a lovely day. Love you. Bye bye and congratulations.